What's happening? Welcome to the episode uh, number nine, I believe, of the Slab Stream, the only live stream dedicated only to slab bass and slab bass players. Uh, my name is George Stiepovic. I'm your friendly neighborhood bull fiddle cat. Uh, today's guest is a good friend of mine and um, great player, great guy. I've known him, I believe, for, I don't know, 12, 13 years or so uh, before I started Art of Slab Bass because, um, and that's obvious because he was the star of the first episode of the Art of Slab Bass. If you're not familiar with my website, artofslabbass.com, make sure to go there, check it out and check out his interview uh, he's playing is also on my youtube channel bull fiddle cat and you should definitely subscribe to that one uh, if you did not do that yet do that now um, his name is nicolas duboucher uh, you probably heard that name if you if you googled anything slap related you probably found out about his way of playing willie dixon slap uh, uh, Tinga Ding technique that he calls uh, that he named that way. Um, I'm going to ask him about that as well. And a few other tricks. Very unique player. We share a lots of um, lots of common interests, and the slap was obviously something that connected us. And it's actually interesting. I want to share this story with you. I had an old website where I listed my influences and where I wanted to. Uh, to point out like some other players, nowadays players that play great slap. And I mentioned um, Gilles Chevacherie, another French guy, great player. And almost no one knew about him. I mean, still people are not aware how great of a player Gilles is. And, but Nicolas obviously was. And then he sent me an email. He said like, hey, I checked out your um, new video, Atomic Boogie. And it's cool. I like it. And I'm really glad you like Gilles Chevacherie. And we started talking. And a couple of years later, I even visited him in, um, in France. And we went to, to see uh, Gilles Chevacherie uh, playing um, with, I, I forgot who, who was that. Um, I think Jean-Paul Amoureux. Nicolas probably remembers that better. And it was Gilles' 60th birthday. So it was extra special. All right. So without further ado, I want to introduce Nicolas Duboucher. Let me add him to the stream. Bonjour. Hi. Bonjour, mon ami. Yeah, Hi, buddy. Hi, fellow. Hi, bro. <laughs> How's it going? How are you? Super hot. It's 40 Super degrees. Hot. 40 degrees I don't uh, cel uh, Celsius I don't know in America it's 100 something no yeah 40 is 40 40 Celsius is pretty hot but it's, it's nice ready. you're on a river you're still in Bordeaux right yes I'm in Bordeaux okay but it's you you have that river over there so it's kind of nice right you can chill over there and enjoy I got this sorry I, I didn't understand uh, there, there's got, a river. There's, I remember there was a there's yeah. A there's a river, river in Bordeaux uh, uh, called the uh, the Garonne. Ah, okay. And if and you're close to it, it's it's kind of nice and chill. Yeah, the river is in the city, and we got the the ocean very close at uh, 60, 60 kilometers. Oh wow! Okay. Do you yes. ever go there? No, not today. No. Okay. <laughs> I wish. Yeah, it's nice to have ocean i'm still in europe i'm in serbia right now and for all of you viewers uh this interview has been pre-recorded because nicola right now has a gig and i want to ask him actually about that because none of us have gigs these days and he, he, he had in july he had 17 or 18 gigs something crazy like that and he's been busy as always uh so nicola please tell me so is, are things back to normal completely in France or, or, or kind not, of? Not exactly to normal. We are uh, very lucky. Uh, the state uh, paid us until um, August, uh, August 2021. We will be paid and uh, have time to make uh, our special... Uh, we got a special statement. You know? We have to make uh, 43 gigs 
uh, a year to be paid by uh, the, the government, the state. So we are lucky, we are, uh, they call it um, uh, a white year, like a free year of, uh, of payment. And uh, we can gig a, a bit this summer with a special, uh, ah, sorry, I'm not used to speak in English. Uh, 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 with social, uh, we call it social distanciation. We have to, we have to be uh, to wear a mask, to be uh, far from uh, other people, not to be close. But we have gigs. We can gig. Uh, I'm very lucky because I play a lot uh, acoustically. I can play in the streets. I can play without a PA system amplification. And uh, I can play this summer. I don't know. I'm, I'm a bit um, uh, anxious for uh, September and this summer because uh, the the inside gigs are not very very sure. I'm not sure we will play the, this winter. But so only yeah. the gigs, only the gigs outside, only outdoor gigs are allowed so far. Yes. And you have yes. to you, you have to. Wear no, a mask while you're playing? No, no, we have to to uh, wear a mask only in in uh, inside situations like ah, okay. shops or uh, or something. Got it. And so so basically, when you play, you just have to be far from the people. Yes. To keep the social distance. So, social distance. Okay, that's All right. it. Is and that same for or what is it like fire behind you? <laughs> I live in the city. Okay, okay. 40 degrees, there, there is fire everywhere. <laughs> if, if you guys like if you haven't been like to Bordeaux, I highly recommend and like go to one of Nicolas gigs. I visited him a few times. I, play, I toured with my band Fish Tank Ensemble and I stayed at his place. It's always a um, great pleasure and hanging out with him and um, and eating um, uh, uh, tartare. Tartare. Yeah. Raw meat. Exactly. one of my favorites feel free to, to come back when you want oh yeah, yeah i mean i can't wait you know it's just like it's just too crazy i don't know i'm right now in serbia and i'll i'll be back to the states in a few days hopefully so i'll be back to slapsville and um so so i'm just gonna continue doing what i'm what i've been doing but I hope and hope for some new gigs but it doesn't look that promising it really does not so mm. i'm a little, little skeptical but you know, it's better to be uh, safe than sorry, you know? So once they say and pronounce it's, it's safe, we're gonna start touring and start uh, playing, hopefully sooner than later. Um, so you haven't been playing for three months or four months since the, this whole situation started? Yes, we will. We, uh, we've been uh, in a lockout on the middle of March to uh, middle of May. Oh, okay. Well, that doesn't doesn't look that bad. It doesn't sound that bad. Like no, it's a two months. Two months is, but uh, I stay. Uh, I was uh, in the country at a friend's house, an old house to be restored, repaired. So oh, okay. I spent a uh, I spent a great time at the uh, in the garden. That's cool. It was, it was great. Not a, not a bad thing. All right, but did you have your bass with you back there? Yes. Oh, okay. So you got. Yes, you got we, we play. We played a bit, but, uh, nice. just for fun. So, uh, have you recorded any any of those duos that you've been doing? No, we pl we planned to to make it, but we didn't. Oh, we right. we well, played just uh, just crazy songs. <laughs> uh, okay. Uh, if you guys are not familiar with uh, Nicolas Dubouchet, like he has a great uh, YouTube channel as well. So make sure like to check it out. It has like all kind of cool tricks. Um, and um, all right, let's go back to slap since we're talking um, in the slap stream. So it has to be re everything related to slap. Uh, first question that I want to ask you, like how did you develop your own style? It's... Um, for me, it's very unique. It's very different, and I haven't heard 
uh, people playing the way you do. So I, I would be curious to hear about your influences and uh, just about that process. How did you find your own voice? I don't know. I think it's because I, I started uh, in the 80s without uh, internet, we, without a professor to give me lessons. So I heard um, all the all the tracks, you know, like uh, Bill Haley, um, Eddie Cochran, Gene Vincent, Elvis Presley, and I try to figure out how they play to play the, the same uh, the same thing, the same style, and uh, finally develop uh, my own style if it really exists. It's be because I, I think it's because I don't have a great culture, musical culture. I, uh, I hear uh, some music, but I'm not that much. I prefer to play. Well, that's the best. You know, people <laughs> like listening to to you playing. So that's that's the, that's the goal then. Um, how about your influences back in those days? So you started, you kind of started as a rockabilly player, as I, uh, yeah. as, as you mentioned that. So was that like kind of like the Stray Cats vibe, or more like the traditional, more um, uh, authentic, as they called it back in the day? I started, uh, I think, with uh, really with the Stray Cats. It was my main uh, influence in the early '80s. They were the, they were the stars, and they are again. I was a big fan of the Stray Cats. I put uh, the vinyl and tried to figure out what uh, what Lee, Lee uh, was playing. <laughs> yeah. And and then um, uh, because of the Stray Cats, the Stray Cats, I discovered rockabilly. I was 12 or 13 years old. I did not know. I did not knew know a lot of things about music. And so that was early '80s, mid mid '80s, or what, what, when was that? Early early '80s. I, okay. I started in '83 uh, to play bass. Yes. Oh wow! And you started I, because of slap and because of rockabilly. Yes, because one album of the Stray Cats, the first one. Oh really? Okay, cool. So That's do you remember what was the first song that you learned? I think it was Runaway Boys. Oh, okay, so you went like from A1, A2, A3, and learned the whole thing. Exactly. Yeah, I mean that. First, I had uh, an electric bass, but I, got, I had no money to buy a, a double bass. I have an electric bass, and I put a, a wood stick under the bass, the electric bass, and uh, to to make a to make it a standard bass and play like this and slap beat. That's cool. Or food. That's so so when did you get your first bass, first upright bass? Uh, one year later, I worked uh, on a, a Wednesday morning and Saturday morning on the market to put, to help people on the market to um, install uh, their stuff. And they give me a little uh, tip. And I finally buy a, a double bass one, one year later. And do you, what kind of bass was that? Plywood, uh, French plywood. Do you still have it? Uh, no, but uh, I know the guy who had it. Oh, okay, cool. And uh, what what was the setup on that bass that you had back then? It was a traditional uh, steel strings. And uh, it was very difficult because when I heard the Stray Cats on a on the the album, I want exactly the same sound. And uh, when I touched my first double bass, I didn't have the sound of the album in my fingers. <laughs> I was a bit disappointed. Oh, it's a, <laughs> oh, I I have to work. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like any kid of of, uh, of the period, I think. And back then in France, were there any other slap bass players? Maybe, I don't know. There were, um, because of the strikeouts in each country, there were 
a new band playing rockabilly with a blonde hair singer and a double bass. You got one in Serbia, I'm sure you're in yeah, the yeah. 80s, no? yeah. Of course. We are, we had one. Uh, I don't remember the name. <laughs> and um, so, but you were not in touch with you. You were not able to see any slap bass playing live. No, no. I, I was 13 or uh, 14 years old. Uh, I uh, I was at my parents. Oh, okay. So you figured out by yourself how to play slap? Uh, yes, slap. Okay. Yes, and a bass with a, a friend. A friend of mine a little bit older and a very much better guitarist mm -hmm. so he helped me he told me play plays at bass line and, and we are still friends oh cool, cool. Uh, and so when did you switch to more traditional approach um, i don't know if i ever switched to traditional approach <laughs> I mean, if I understand correctly, your main focus these days is New Orleans jazz and kind of like old oh, yes. style music, right? Yes. Then I, after the Stray Cat, I discovered the, the traditional rockabilly. I was a big fan of uh, Bill Ellie, double bass player. You you talked uh, a lot about uh, different all the bass player of uh, Bill Ellie. Uh, Bill I Haley. Bill Haley, sorry. Oh, okay. I so was a fan so of the... Martin Lytle and Al Rex and those guys? Yes. Cool. And the, the sound of the bass was amazing in these recordings. Yeah, everybody, every, it seems that everybody was influenced by that sound. It's yeah. just listening to Rock Around the Clock or any of those recordings. It's, it's, it's 13 amazing. Women. Yes. It's, 13 Women, this song is amazing. It's And it's cool that, you know, Basically, both Al Rax and Marshall Idle had um, very, very similar sound. And I believe that Al Rax had that sound in his fingers before Marshall Idle. Um, unfortunately, every, everyone gives credits only to Marshall Idle, but, but Al Rax was uh, at least as good. Uh, I, I love the guy. If you guys are not familiar with Al Rax, Check out Art of Sled Bass, and there's a, there's a nice uh, article about Al. I want to always make sure that right people get the, the credit. So that's what, what I'm doing, Slapstream as well. And um, so, so, when you got, so when you got influenced by Bill Haley and more traditional uh, rockabilly people, so were you, uh, was it still in the 80s? Uh, sorry. Uh, so when you got influenced by by more traditional rockabilly after the Stray Cats, was that still in the eighties? Uh, yes, yes. Okay, and then you switched to gut strings, or like you stayed in steels? No, no, I play I play steel strings uh, from the eighties to uh, to the end of the of the century. <laughs> okay, <laughs> so. But so when did you switch? When did you switch to uh, to guts or whatever you played after steels? I switched to to Weed Waker's strings first, and uh, I switched because a, a friend of mine, you know, Ivan from uh, Cord Lambert, yep, he discovered this. Discovered the the Weed Waker's. He, he, Comes, uh, he came uh, at uh, my home and said, "Oh, what about those trees? They were uh, green, fluorescent green." You know? <laughs> he told he, he he put the sets on my table, and uh, the the sets stay there uh, long weeks. And one day I say, "Oh, I got to test that, to test them." Oh, okay, <laughs> and you like it? The G, the the G was not bad. D not bad, and the A and E were uh, awful. <laughs> so, so were there were those the strings that he made, or did he just bought those strings? No, he, he bought he bought them. Ah, he bought them. Okay. He bought them, and after we made a, our own strings. Okay, so I'm I'm definitely going to be asking you about that. Um, but I want to stick to to your playing for a little bit, and. Um, so during that period, uh, like, so what did uh, the, the the band leaders uh, think about your slap playing? Were they encouraging you to do that, or were they kind of like? 
you don't have to play that all the time. Yeah, yeah, they encourage you. They encourage me to do it. Because it was mostly rockabilly, right? It's mo it was only rockabilly. Oh, okay. I, I played only rockabilly from the uh, 80s to the end of, of the century. Oh, okay. So when did you start playing other, other styles of music? When I, I started, you know? Yeah, when did you start playing other, other st music styles? At uh, the early... Uh, uh, to, to, um, 2000s? 2000. Oh, okay. So a little bit before we, we met. I think we met in 2004 or five or something like that. Yes, a, a bit before. Oh, okay. I thought that was always kind of your passion for some reason. And um, so, I mean, let's, let's get back to those strings. I mean, since I'm sure that lots of people are interested. Uh, so how did you develop, like, uh, uh, how did you develop Cord Lambert? It's because we 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 bought every every woodworker wood strings that were on the market, and we are we were not completely uh, satisfied with them, and we try uh, to uh, experiment a lot of things uh, on them to make them a, a little give them more tension, a bit more uh, harmonic. Um, a real gut aspect. Mm -hmm. But so I you find the real, the real you color, of, the same color as gut, and the twisted, twisted effect. You know. Ah, uh, so so you were experimenting on on the strings that already existed, or you you immediately invent invented new strings. Uh, we no, we, we started with with uh, new strings. You know, all with weaker strings. I don't know if I have to to say to say this here, but it's all from the same line uh, in America. All with weaker oh, strings. Okay. Yes, it's 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 with weakers with eater for okay, the. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I know. I know. Okay. So, so you have it, different gauges, diameters. You know, you choose what you want and you make your strings with them. Ah, okay. So you were buying the, the 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 them from the U.S. and then yes, you would you would treat them and then make them your own. Okay, that's it. And after we developed something else with a uh, nylon for uh, from uh, Europe, okay. but but different nylons and there is a lot a lot of of quality of nylons. So if we we had to buy everything, try everything, and make. Or own treatment on them. It was a long work and expensive, oh, too. <laughs> but okay. a very nice experience. But you know, it, at one point, everybody loved those strings. I remember that you know people were very impressed on the uh, all the bass players that play like traditional rockabilly or or early swing. You know, they loved those strings. I mean, I just remember how many emails I received through our club bass. <laughs> Like, hey, you know, are those strings available here? Are these available? So it was, it was, it was crazy. Um, are you still doing those strings? Are you still making them? Yes, uh, we are. Um, uh, Ivan, my uh, partner, bought uh, an old house to restore him, uh, him too, him as well, and uh, he's very busy, and uh, we we developed. Uh, Almost two years ago, new strings, which are uh, nylon, but uh, wounded. You say wounded, wrapped. I don't know. Mm -hmm. uh, with nylon again, and they sound really better with the uh, harmonics, same harmonics as guts. They are very nice. But we got D and G are uh, very perfect. Nice. But, but E and A, I'm not uh, hundred percent uh, satisfied. So. Well, so more more experimentation. So how long? Yeah. Uh, how many? How many different sets did you did you did you make like over time? With uh, Lambert. Uh, yes, I, I don't mean like you know how many did you sell. Like I mean how many different, uh, different sets experiments you had like you know since you since you started. Uh, you're talking about the sets that were yes. on the market. 
uh, I don't know, four or five. Four or five different ones? Or maybe six. Maybe six, okay. Maybe six. I remember I that you, 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 you always send me a new one. I say like, hey, try these ones. Like these are <laughs> better than the, the old ones. And it's like, wow, like Nikolai is spending like lots of time with, the, uh, with Ivan researching all these things. That's cool. Um, so what kind of strings do you have on the bass right now? Uh, right now, I have the DNG are the new prototypes. And the uh, ENA are very old uh, Presto. All right. Do you, you want to do, do, do you want to play something for us now? No. <laughs> yes. Okay. I'm going to okay. play, um, I don't know. Uh, a kind of blues with a uh, different techniques on it. All right, we, we, blues in in which key? G. Blues in G. All right. All right, set up. All right, people. Like so, I'm gonna let Nicola set up with his bass. Uh, so he's gonna play blues in G, and as as you heard, uh, two of the G and D are. Uh, Cord Lambert and A and E are old Presto. All right, so Nicolas de Boucher. Mm -hmm. So you played uh, like some double stops and some cool cool licks over there. Yes, I start with the, this link. I um, I don't remember I, at my channel. Uh, I name it. I told it, I told you, but I don't remember. It was uh, uh, blues dancing. It's a funny um, funny lick I I found. Created, but you are in G and you play the third C, go back to open G and go to F, which is the seventh. And funny thing is that when, uh, when you go to uh, C short. You play the same thing, but just one step uh, upper. So you are in C and you have seventh, fifth, and third. So you can play like this. That's cool. Those licks that have uh, that, that you just change one one note or the or two notes, 
and you're just in a in a new chord always sound cool we can talk about it you know since i don't have my bass with me uh we, we we're gonna do another time we're gonna uh, do a lesson with nicola and then i'm gonna post it separately and link it to this video and uh, so make sure to subscribe make sure to subscribe to my channel so you can um, you can get that information uh so just like just to repeat real quick like for um, you that wanted to learn this uh, lick immediately basically you start with the b open g and um f and that's for the that's for the for the for the g chord right yes and then when you go to c you just move um a half step down which is b flat uh, G and E, right? Okay. In, in the key of C. And then you're in yeah. which is four. And, okay. uh, in, uh, in four. when we're playing in G. Uh, cool. And so what do you do? Is there anything that you do for five in that case? Uh, for five, I play um, double stops. Okay. That is a D and A. Okay. And for double stops, do you always use uh, uh, those fifths, or you do some some other intervals as well? Uh, yes, all intervals uh, that are uh, playable that I'm able to. Play. For D, you play a D with A, and then. Double stops, double stops on on upright bass. Know, really cool. I know it. It's special for you. Special for you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, for some reason, always, always. You can you can mix uh, mix all these techniques. That's what I did. Yeah. great sounds really cool all right since we're we're here and we're talking about the different slap bass patterns i want to ask you a question that i always ask my guests because um it seems there's quite a bit of confusion or there's not anything that it's set in stone as far as um, um terminology that we use for slap bass so what would be what would be a single slap for you for me it's only when you you slap the string for one note, I play this single slap. Okay, and so what would be a double slap? Double is a uh, when there is one slap between two notes. It could be uh, eight notes or shuffle, like uh, I don't know. Or shuffle. The same page so far so and, um, and um, how about uh, triple slaps triple there are some different triple uh, one used in a in rockabilly traditionally the... i don't know how you call it i, I i'm used to call it the train I'm gonna down this a bit. Let's see the. Oops. It is triplet. George, how are you? 
uh, where, oh, so you were asking me. Yeah, yeah. So that, that's a, I'm, I well, consider that that a triple slap as well. Uh, I call it gallop, but you know, it's I, oh, I see I see your point with um, with um, with the train because it makes sense, especially for old country songs like a Johnny Cash style. It it would it will be very train related, but I I've I heard um, that in different styles. Uh, they would call that like a galop or something in that vibe. So I I, I, I stuck to that oh. term. But that's essentially it. That's basically the first triple slap because there's a note and two, uh, the tone that has a slap back of the string and then two um, palm slaps, whatever you want to call them. Uh, anything, so you, got, uh... you wanted to mention triplets? Another triplet, uh, very low. Yep, got it. I mean, that's a uh, rumba pattern at the end, right? The, the one that you Ooh. played? Uh, no. Roomba, Roomba, for sure. Uh, and for sure. The... Yep. So, what are the other like patterns? I'm, I'm gonna uh, uh, want to ask you, like, what are all the other patterns that that you use besides that? Uh, I mean, first one, how? Yeah, never no, no, actually. Like, I will let you talk. I don't want to influence you with my way of thinking. Um, so, can you play all the other patterns that you use and just um, uh, mention how you how you call it, yeah, call and it. Um, and then uh, just 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 play. There is the the drag slap for sure. This one. I think uh, Kevin and Mark Rodin did. Talk, talk, talk about, about, the, about it. Uh, uh. This is a drag, drag slap. I play a uh, quad, quadruple, uh, Willie Dixon quad. So slaps, I got one technique I dropped uh, once at YouTube. It's much more for showing. Uh, and this one. How do you call that one? Uh, I don't. I, I don't. I don't have a name for them. <laughs> Maybe the let's call it the 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 palm palm quad. This one and this one, the reverse palm or the the drag quad. Anything else that you want to show? Uh, after this, I got a lot of uh, the thing you know I call a tinker ding technique. Oh, yeah. I play it in single slap like this. I play it with a open G too. I got different ones with uh, with two notes. 
Sounds cool. I like it. How do you, how do you name it? Ting tinga ding. T F to tinga ding. And it, it reminds me a little bit on some some uh, Willie Dixon licks. Is that where you got it? Is that was that inspiration or? On um, Willie Dixon. Yeah, was that an inspiration for a tinga ding? Oh, no, 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 no. Uh, yes, uh, you uh, tinga ding uh, only with the fingers. Yes. <laughs> But you can hear this uh, this tinga ding in a, a lot a lot of uh, old recordings. Mm -hmm. But I add uh, slaps on it. Sounds to create, cool. uh, Sounds great. To make something funny and okay. Uh, anything else that you wanna like? share that comes to your mind that you're that, that it's in your arsenal of slap patterns uh oh. this one is, is very funny if you want to figure it out uh, um, like let's play um uh digga digga do cool sounds great um so we're gonna i don't have as as i said before i don't have my bass with me so we're gonna do a slap bass lesson with nicolas du boucher uh when i come back to slapsville so i'm gonna that's learn a pain. tricks that's a pain you don't have it <laughs> yeah it's it's it feels strange you know um, I, I like all those uh syncopations that's funny. You can play, for instance, uh, one boogie with with syncopation like this. You play. Just a funny thing you can play on boogie. Ba -bam, ba -bam, ba -bam, ba -bam. Yeah, all those syncopations always add some life. I some feel kind of like it's kind of, it's, 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 it's yeah, and it's a little more um, organic. It's not yeah. like steady and strict, like most of the contemporary music. Um, all right, so we are on the same page as far as uh, terminology. I'm glad to hear that. Yes, yeah, I was sure. <laughs> um, let's. Uh, I mean, you can leave your bass now for for a second. So we can talk. Continue talking. Uh, you might need like a, a minute to get ready. I want to remind you to subscribe 
to my channel. Subscribe button should be around here somewhere, so make sure to click on it. Um, and um, and also uh, it means a lot if you press the like button and write the write down the comments since this one is pre-recorded. Uh, but Nikolai and me will will be answering your questions, so you can um, live chat here on the side. And but if you're watching this video later on, make sure to to write down the the questions under the video. So so and then we'll we'll answer. So anything that you have on your mind, let's write down, and we will give you an advice because Nikola is one of rare bass players that is playing a gig right now Sounds crazy <laughs> in, during this time all right so he's back in the chair and ready all right cool i'm so glad to have you here you know it's like you know I've, so far has been this live stream has been kind of really amazing because it gives me an opportunity to talk to all these guys that i really admire and then i consider friends so it's it's really cool thank you for being a part of it thank you my friend always it's this good to it's good number to... nine already episode number nine so crazy it's, it's great to be to be locked down together yeah <laughs> I mean, this is as a... uh, as scott owen from the living game mentioned like this is intimacy right now so it's we're in each other houses so you know you can't you cannot get like any more intimate than this right now. So crazy, so crazy. Um, we were talking about uh, your switch to more jazz sound, like after uh, after you played rockabilly for twenty years or so. But you still play some rockabilly, right? Yes, I got a still a my band named the uh, Charlas. And we played. It's it's, it's, it's uh, the band uh, uh, started when I when I moved to Bordeaux. I'm uh, from Paris, and I moved to Bordeaux in uh, 1906. And then uh, we started this band, uh, this trio, Rockabilly Trio. Oh, so you're you're a founding member? Yes, I am. <laughs> all, all three of you. Uh, no, there were another drummer for okay. the the two first years. Ah, okay. And now it is uh, the, the same. Oh, okay, that's yeah. cool. So you guys breed together. It's very important to have a drummer that you can rely on. Um, and and please remind me what what was it? It's Jan. It's the name of the drummer. Hmm? Yeah. Jan, right? Jan Jan Vicker. Yes, Jan Vicker, and and. He plays with you in, in, in some of other bands of yours, like more yes, traditional. Uh, we played together with uh, Sweet Dixie. It's a jazz band, swing and jazz, uh, all New Orleans styles. And, and we play together now with, with um, Claribol Stompers. Mm -hmm. It's a new band. It's my friend uh, Denis Giraud. He's a clarinet player, a young player. And uh, we started two two new bands together, oh, and cool. there, and Jan is uh, with Claribel Stompers, which is a uh, gypsy gypsy jazz. Okay. We play the uh, the last period of Django Reinhardt mm. with a it sounds a bit electric guitar electric guitar. Do you slap at all? Not that much. Okay. We slap a bit on a just for for solos for soloing. Okay. Yeah, because I remember that there's not much slap in 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 no. uh, later period of Django. You can find like Louis Vola and Tony Rovira slapping with Django, but that was a little bit before, not the last period of Django. It's interesting that you chose like to play that style. How did that come? To play a uh, gypsy? No, no. How to play? Um, to play jazz. Django's uh, later period, not not you know the the standard uh it's because we played a lot uh, the the early jungle but uh i was always uh listening hearing uh 
uh, last last period of Django Reinhardt. It was oh. um, much more, uh, much more hot hot music, uh, hot jazz. I like it very much. There is a you can find at YouTube one version of um, ma, uh, blues on minor, blues in minor, blues on minor, uh, a live version from uh, 1947. It's amazing. That's why I said uh, to my friends, let's do the last period of Chamber Rain. Wow, cool. Do, do you guys tour at all or do you, do you play any? I mean, not now, but have you been touring at all with that project? Uh, it's a new project. It's a two years, two years old project. Mm -hmm. We started uh, without Yad, without a drummer. It was just two acoustics guitar, one clarinet and me. And uh, I said, no, let's make it electric. <laughs> Interesting. <laughs> and now we play the, the, five, uh, the five of us each time. Tonight we're going to play at a little restaurant, but the five of us. Oh, OK. It's with Jan as well? Yes. So you play with him all the time? Yes. OK. No. So how many no. gigs do you have per week? It, it depends. Um, most of time I play uh, something like, like uh, 130 or uh, 50 gigs a year. Oh, OK. That's but not. This year, this year going to be less, right? Oh, yes. You know what? I When I talk to, to friends to, uh, to New Orleans, they, they play much more than we play. They told me uh, the. George, George, John Joyce or uh, Tyler Thompson, they play two or three times a day. Yeah. Right. They play a it's... lot like that, like in Austin, you know, like two or three gigs per day. Yeah, that's Crazy. Right. Yeah. Right. New Orleans, it's it's the same, you know, like they had, I'm not sure how things are in Austin these days, you know, but it's, um, it used to be crazy, you know, that you could play anywhere. And uh, New Orleans, it's, Kind of like a similar similar vibe, which is great. Um, I was never in a place where I could do that, but it's you know in L LA is definitely different. Like being in LA, but you know, I don't have an option like to play that type of gigs. Maybe I never came across with that, but but it's I don't know. Uh, so, um, so and you mostly play early jazz these days. And and uh, late Django. Uh, yes, that's it. I, uh, with a bit of charlas too, <laughs> a oh, bit okay. of a bit of rockabilly, still with my uh, old band, but most of time I play early jazz or, or gypsy jazz. And what kind of gigs are those? Are those like restaurants or festivals or what is it? Everything. 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 Here uh, in France, uh, festivals are only in in the summer. Mm -hmm. So during the during the, the rest of the year, you get to find something else. There is small festivals during the winter or, or springtime, but um, it's much more during the summer. And this summer, all festivals are, are canceled. Wow. Amazing. But you're still playing, you know, 20 times per, per month, so which is good. I'm, I'm lucky, I'm lucky. Oh, yeah, I bet. Um, so, 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 what are your main projects? Uh, to be alive. <laughs> uh, I mean, as far as bands go, like, what, what, which bands are you playing with? I don't have a main project. I got, I got two, uh, two, three, or four bands. It, it depends on the, on the year. This year, we, we recorded with a, one uh, album with the first album with Clary Ball Stompers. So I can I can say it's one of the main project, but in the meantime we are recording an album with Charles too. So all projects are important. Oh. <laughs> so it's yeah I'm sorry I'm producing here as well. So so you're playing with with three bands basically now. It's a Charles Rockabilly. Uh, Sweet Dixie, Old Jazz, and what is the name of the, the Django project? Uh, Claribol Stompers. 
So those are the three bands that you're playing with. Yes, it's not uh, Sweet Dixie. Don't don't uh, exist. Uh, don't exist anymore. It should the name uh, has changed now. Now it's called uh, Big Four Sweet. But ah, okay. we, but we don't we play uh, maybe to ten gigs a year. Ah okay. And uh, with uh, Denis, Denis, the guy uh, who who created the uh, Claribot Stompers, the clarinet clarinetist, we have another project uh, which is named the um, Denis Giro New Orleans project, and we play uh, early jazz, really early jazz from New Orleans, but with no drummer this time. In front line, we have a trombone, trumpet, and clarinet. And uh, in back, we have a banjo and double bass. We will uh, we will make a, a, a video clip in September or October to introduce the band. And how about uh, San Severino? You were playing with him as well, right? I play with him time to time. We we became, became uh, become friends, and uh, we play time to time. And those are big gigs, right? Those are big gigs, and um, the main difference is that he sings in French. Mm -hmm. And for me, on stage, it's very different because of the audience. In France, everybody uh, in that kind of music. If you play blues or jazz, uh, everybody sings. Thing in uh, in English, but people, the audience, don't really understand what what you are talking about or singing. But when I play with him, and he's a very funny guy, very good person, and when he's he's singing French, you have old people like this. Oh, they understand what what is what he's talking about. And for me, that's that very new. It's it's different, yeah. And it's, is it uh, so? How often do you play with him? Just once in a while. Okay. It's, uh, it, it's pretty new. It's one year. Uh... I remember you were telling me, you told me when you started playing with him. And then I remember that those gigs were kind of like bigger gigs. And those are, the, were those, those mostly festivals and solo shows or it was? No, uh, just festivals. Just festivals. Just, okay. Yes, he's very, very famous here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So yeah. that's why I'm asking you. You know, some of you know. Do you do you slap with him at all? A bit. <laughs> he, he wants me to slap more, <laughs> and I is say that... no. Yes. Really? And you yeah. say no? Why? Why is that? Say, no, that's too much. <laughs> <laughs> you, know, you, you know, when you play with a, uh, a, a famous singer like this, and your bass player. Uh, maybe you're gonna have one solo. Yeah. Each time he give me, he gave me three solos, and push me. Come on, more, more, more. <laughs> hey, stop. Yeah, you know, I'm sure the audience love it. Yeah, it's for for our showing too. Yeah, everybody loves laugh. Um. So, who are the other artists that you were playing with uh, during all these years, during your career? Is there anybody that you would like to uh, mention besides these? I I played uh, two two or three times with Mike Sanchez. You know, Mike Sanchez is a singer, pianist. And he, um, that's the guy who sang in the album of uh, Jeff Beck, uh, uh, the album um, uh, about uh, Cliff Gallup, Gene Vincent's uh, guitarist. Do you remember this album? Yep. Yes. And the singer was Mike Sanchez. And uh, he's a really nice guy, too, great singer and a pianist. He, he, called, uh, he, called, he calls me sometimes. That's great. I think that his band was a uh, Big Town Playboys, and that album that you're talking about is uh, Crazy Legs. Exactly. Uh, if I remember correctly. Cool. Uh, so, so you when you play with him, it's mostly like rhythm and blues, that type of style. Uh, oh yes, it's rhythm and blues, rock and roll, uh, 
روز بوگی بوگی بایی ایجاست ای کالز بی وان ایز بیسیس ایز نوت ایر آه اوکی سو وانس این اوائل بایی ایجاست 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 And do you ever play outside of France or you're mostly? I play mostly in France. Yes. Okay. Do you tour in France or you're just around Bordeaux? I don't want, <laughs> I don't want to tour that much. So, so if people want to see you play in person, they have to come to Bordeaux. To come to Bordeaux or to come to the slap stream. <laughs> <laughs> no, I don't want, uh, you know, when I, I had my, uh, my daughter, Uh, 19 years ago, I decided to uh, to stay with my daughter and not to tour, tour and tour. I, I wanted to 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 show to see her uh, grow up, and I did. Well, now, and now maybe now, now you can start touring. Maybe. Okay. Yes, why not? Why not? If, if there are if there are a good tour, I don't want to to tour, uh, stay in the bus, play in little pubs. Uh, it's boring. Yeah, it's boring. it could be tough. Yes, San, San Severino can take you on a tour. Maybe if he calls me for a big tour, okay. <laughs> That's cool. Um, any other name that you want to mention? That anybody else that you play with? Uh, Uh, yes, if I can remember, I played a bit with uh, Kenny Wayne, Kenny Blues Boss Wayne. You know him? Yeah, I, I think he is from uh, Vancouver. Okay. Yeah. And maybe he's from New Orleans. No, maybe he's from New Orleans and he lived, he moved to to Vancouver. Hmm. We we played two uh, two tours. Oh, okay. In France, uh, Switzerland. Around France, okay, not too far. How about that rockabilly guy? You you showed me a record of him when I came to your place, the one that it's kind of like a Brian Setzer, uh, sounding and looking. Uh, what, what ah name? yes, his name is a uh, Victor. Oh yeah, yeah. Victor Ugano. I played on a uh, on one. Of his recording, uh -huh. but we don't play. Uh, ah, so you haven't played any gigs with him? So it was no, I played, I played two or oh, three okay. gigs. Uh, he called me because he he wanted a slap on his uh, recording. Mm -hmm. um, in, the, in 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 the introduction of this episode, I mentioned how. We kind of connected because of Gilles Chevacherie. Uh, yeah. Are you still in touch with him? Yeah, sometimes. Okay. How is he doing? I think he's fine. Uh, last time he called me, it was about uh, uh, pickup and uh, amplification. Okay. He asked me for uh, he asked me for uh, advices, and that's all. He's fine. He's such a great guy. I love that guy. His playing is amazing. Um, when when did you get familiar with him, with, with his playing? Was it in the 90s? Um, well, no, end of the 90s or, uh, or early um, to, to, to thousands. Uh -huh, okay. Uh, no, it's because... Um, Uh, one friend of mine gave me a tape, so it was uh, in the 90s, I think. <laughs> gave me a tape with Gilles Chevaucherie. And I listened it. Oh, I love the, the style of this guy. I want to play like him. And uh, I have this tape with four, uh, four songs that I've, I've sent to you. But the same, uh, the same song I, I sent to you. Chevaucherie, Fantastic. And, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Washboard regal, I don't remember the name. And uh, I, I uh, we were on the same uh, festival one time. And you know, I, um, when I was 12 years old, during the Stray Cats period, I was in holidays in the uh, south of France. 
I've, uh, I was watching a band in the place of the, the village, and there is a guy on the, the bass. I did not know nothing about bass. And uh, he played a solo, and I said, oh, I want to play this instrument. And the guy was Gilles. Ah, okay. And when I met him at the festival, I uh, I uh, told him about this history, and he he took me in his arms and said, "Hey, Sonny, you're my you're my son." <laughs> <laughs> and we became friends. He's such a great guy. I I've been familiar with his name since kind of I think early nine. I mean mid 90s or so I, I re exactly remember I played the jazz festival in and I was a kid I was really young and I played the jazz festival um, in Belgrade Serbia and there was a French band uh, that played jazz as well and I talked to the bass player and then he told me oh you should check out Gilles Chevacherie I was like who that guy is in it so that's the first time I heard about I uh, heard his name but I was never able to find any of his recordings until, I guess, the late 90s or maybe even early 2000s. I found some of, um, what was the name of the band? Darico Rouge? Les, ah oui, Les Arico Rouge. Yeah, so I found some of those and I was super impressed. And I think it was like maybe a couple songs or something. And then you came along and then you showed me um sent me like some of other other um other songs and then yeah. then i found after that i mean we both of us like found like his full discography or something and then analyzed everything uh such a great player i mean i think that you know bass world not just the slab bass world uh should really be familiar with his playing he i read somewhere that he was subbing for willie dixon in memphis slim's band that's what he, he told us. Remember when when you you had questions? Yeah. For I asked him this question, and he answered. Uh, he was super lucky that uh, you know in France there was a in Paris a jazz club named uh, Lionel Hampton Jazz Club. That's the place uh, uh, we we went together for his birthday, and. Uh, the guy um, who had the, um, the, the, the who gave the date, I don't know. How do you call him? The, the manager, the tour tour guy, the booker of the jazz club, uh, wants him as a bassist sometimes. And uh, there were Memphis Slim and Willie Dixon played there. And uh, once Willie Dixon uh, could not uh, went to Paris, and uh, the the programmer, the programmer of the place called Gilles and say, "Oh, Memphis Slim don't have a, a bass player. Do you want to play with him?" And he, he started. He started like that. He's very lucky too. Very lucky, but you know what? Memphis Slim was very lucky as well that he found. He did that. I'm really. It's. It's. He's that that kind of a player he's on that level he he's i'm surprised that actually jill did not play uh did not have more major gigs like that and that, that he that more people outside of france are not familiar about him because he's really i mean especially during that period he was probably top five oh, yes. uh, bass player in the world i mean it's just I, I'm, I'm digging that lick that he has with the open G string. Yes. I remember, we were talking about him, about it, like when we. We talked a lot about, about this. The main guys that we, we were talking about were uh, Gilles and Woody Dixon Slap. Yeah. <laughs> Gilles is. Two, two points. Exactly. Um, so. I mean, hopefully, like maybe we can figure out some way, like that you, like that, that, that you, you, you bring him to the slap stream. You know, it would be great if more people find out about him, so you can be a translator or something. Yeah. Can we, can we make that happen? Yeah, yeah. I, I could be, and I would be. The question uh, is, Gilles. 
does Gilles uh, every time I call him on the phone and say, oh, a friend of mine, a Serbian guy from America, I want to interview. He said, oh, okay. And when I send, I send the questions, he didn't answer. Oh, that's too yeah, much. Yeah. I have nothing to say. Yeah, I mean, you know, we, 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 it might be good like to do it like live like this so that you are, you know, you guys are maybe together and then uh, we make it happen. We can figure out some cool, cool, um, uh, cool questions for him. I would definitely love to have him here. We, we, we have to make that happen. So after we're done with this episode, let's make a plan. <laughs> um, are there any other slap bass players in France that you would like to mention? Especially back in those days. In France, you have a maybe you know him. You you have a Thibaut Chopin. Maybe you know him. Maybe he send you something. He plays a, the main time that he's a guy who plays with um, Mike Sanchez most of time. He plays a very traditional blues and rhythm and blues style. He play he plays it very well. You have uh, Sébastien Girardeau. Sébastien Girardeau is a, a French and Australian guy. Mm -hmm. Speaks French and uh, English perfectly. And he plays mainly um, uh, traditional jazz. Nice player too. And I got a lot of friends. Uh, I don't know. You want me to mention all the names? <laughs> I, you know, I just wanted, like, you know, like a few guys that you know, like maybe, maybe there's somebody uh, hidden jewel, like, like, like a Gilles that you know, somebody that our audience should know about him. About um, okay, let's go. Let's um, uh, move on, and um, I would like to talk about your uh, your gear, your bass, and uh, you mentioned what strings are you playing. But I would like to hear about your pickups and the amps. I know that you don't use amp that often, but like when you do, what you Not do. Often. And uh, what kind of basses are you playing these days? Uh, you know, I'm a I'm a lefty. I'm I'm a lefty guy, so uh, I don't have a lot of choice. Choose. I don't know. I have two uh, Engel harps basses. Um, very nice play, plywood bass, and uh, I play with a uh, pickup is a K K and K bass max, and I I put it into a, a sound up. When I play a uh, acoustic jazz on a festival, I put just a bit of. Um, of the pickup right in the, in a, this bass driver that is very famous i think it works uh, very good and i add a, a microphone on the bass um, most famous uh, is a dpa but it's very expensive i don't type one when the guy uh, the sound guy got one, I put it. But if you don't, I have this uh, little sign either. It's not a super good microphone, but it's good enough to um, to add the, the wood sound of the bass. You can add finger uh, wood, uh, wood sound, finger nose, slap. And uh, the very interesting interesting thing is the clump with this clump it's it's very easy to put it on the bridge you clump it on the bridge like this and you get the mic uh you can put it in the direction of a fingerboard and then i mix the two uh, the two microphones the pickups with the mic and uh to, Good, good acoustic sound, no feedback. That's enough for me. And so you mix it. How do you mix it? Like you have a some some preamp, oh, or you have uh, two channels in the on your. No, no, the guy on on the PA. On ah, the, your sound guy. 
the sound guy mix it. And when I play uh, with my uh, amp, I play straight in the amp. I, I don't use the, this, this uh, the iBox. Oh, okay. So it goes straight to the uh, you you put in the pickup straight to the amp. Pick up straight to the amp, and the amp got a, a DI included. So I uh, I drive to the amp to the PA system through okay. the amp. Well, that makes sense. Um, and uh, but you don't use the, the the amps that often. No. And what kind of amp do, are you using? I got a Gallium Kruger. Ah, okay. But not not the old one, very famous. Uh, the new one. Mm -hmm. Are you happy with it? Yes. Okay. <laughs> yes. And and those and you have two bases. That's right. Two angle yes. hearts. Yeah. Are they the same? Almost. Okay. Do you have a different setup on them, or they're exactly the same? Uh, for the moment, yes. I, uh, the other um, angle art is strung with a gut, mm -hmm. plain, a plain ADNG gut, and a uh, E string is a wounded gut. Okay. But uh, I can't play with gut uh, just because uh, I break every uh, G string. Huh. A G string is one month for me. That's too much. For the guts? Yes. But and for chord lambert? Yes, I play chord lambert. I mean, you don't break them that often. Uh, never. Ah, it's okay. imp impossible to break. <laughs> and do you? Uh, uh, but how how long do they last? I don't know. These um, the DNG on this bass are uh, more than two years, and they were prototypes, and oh, wow. they are they are still alive. Wow, still have the cool sound? I think so. They lost a bit of the, the color, mm -hmm. but the sound, in, I think, the, is the same. That That's great. Um, so are those strings available now, the Cord Lambert? No. No, no, the D, D and G are prototypes. Okay. And we, are, we have again, a, we have worked again on the E and A string. Okay, so when, do you know when will they be available? No. No, okay. <laughs> no. I, I forgot, do you guys have a website? No. You don't, okay. Beautiful. So how, how, they, how can they, if, if there are people interested in the Cord Lambert, how should they get in touch with you? Um, first, we, we have to wait uh, uh, to have a perfect set. So, oh, okay. That is the, and after this, we will see uh, how uh, we're going to do. Okay. Maybe a website. I, I don't know for the moment. So. Okay. You know, well, we love to experiment, to create things, but uh, after this, it's very different to be a, a corporation or society. It's not. Yeah. Uh, and, and so all those strings were handmade, right? Yes. So you and Ivan or Ivan would be making them? more more Ivan than me. Okay. Because uh, the machine is uh, at his uh, home. He's in Paris, outside of Paris. Yes, he's, he's close to Paris, so we are uh, six hundred uh, kilometers far. It's, it's difficult to work together. Yeah, that's, that's not easy. Well, um, I'm full of gigs, too. Oh, yeah. Um, Ivan is playing in what? Even he's playing in a Western Swing band or something, right? Uh, I don't remember the name. I don't remember if he still plays with his Western Swing band. Um, what was the name? Ah. I know the, the new band he plays in is um, the Red Rooster band or something like that, with Red Rooster in it, or Willie Dixon, for sure. Um, uh, no, no, the, the other band was the uh, Back Legs Breaker. Ah, okay. You mentioned uh, Willie Dixon. I want to talk about your slab bass influences. Um, mm -hmm. so who would you, obviously, Willie Dixon? Besides Willie Dixon, are there 
any others and that you could point out? Yes, for sure. All the um, uh, Louis Vola, for sure, for John Bo Reynolds and all the the guys from New Orleans, of, of, all the guys from uh, early jazz, like uh, Bob Foster, Wellman Bro, Al Morgan, uh, Bill Johnson, and the guy from uh, the blues too. All the classic, all the classics player from uh, from the period. Um, uh, Willie Dixon, Ransom Dolly, uh, Ernest Crawford. I don't remember a lot of names. <laughs> All those guys are really interesting uh, and amazing. I want to ask you about you, uh, the position of your right hand. Uh, I noticed when you played um, that little song earlier in the show, during the show, when you when you used uh, Dixon slap the quadruple. Mm -hmm you switched your hand from this position to this position so yep. i wanted to are you using that different position just for that particular pattern or for other patterns as well uh yes for other patterns uh as well all the the tingling uh, i told you about are, are with the end uh, like this it's more uh, comfortable i think you got more speed it's more relaxed than to play it uh, with the palm. Okay. So it's uh, all right. I I, I get it. Um, but for most of it, you're using the 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 palm technique, right? Yes. Okay. And yes. Sure, the these two or these two? These two. Ah. I don't see. It. Ah, okay. So it's always. <laughs> Always point and middle finger. Yes, those those two ones. Okay. Ah. All right, and for double stops as well. Yes. Uh, no, for double. That's funny. Where is my hand? For double stops, uh, I use those two ones. Ah, okay. Middle and the ring finger. It's interesting because I, I, I kind of do the opposite. I do, uh, for double stops, I use uh, middle and point. And usually for just regular patterns I play, uh, I use ring and middle finger. It's kind of like, for me, always made sense because I kind of play like this. And so, and then if I have to play a double stop, I just do this. So it, I don't move my hand almost at all. Okay, I don't know. Yeah, it's. I mean, everybody has its own thing, so it's, it's, it's cool. Um, but I, I, I did not remember that you they're using uh, that often that um, uh, that technique that you're using for uh, for uh, Willie Dixon slap. Um, so when I, when I come back to the states, we're gonna do a lesson and show all of these little little tricks. Uh, our, my guest uh, from. Two weeks ago, I guess uh, William let better. He he's using that technique, kind of like a Milt Hinton style. Yes, uh, and it, I think it, it it works really great. You know, especially for something that needs to have some uh, swing and some 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 jazz, uh, more of a jazz approach. Um, so, uh, uh, so, so speaking of jazz, like I wanted to ask you about uh, what do you think, why jazz kind of almost disappeared in, in uh, sorry, why slap almost disappeared in jazz music? I don't know, maybe uh, from, from what we, we can read on books, slap disappears when, uh, when uh, appeared um, steel strings. And with steel strings appear to uh, amplification and uh, and maybe it's because of this because uh, they they play uh, maybe a more uh, modern music with a drummer and slap uh, wasn't uh, still needed but I don't know I don't have the the keys of the museum. 
Yeah, it's kind of strange that that it kind of disappeared in 1939, you know, and Jimmy Blanton like joined Duke Ellington and all these other cool cats before him kind of like, you know, almost disappeared. Uh, everybody forgot about that period for some reason. I would like to, and I'm sure that, you know, some of our viewers or all of them would love to hear you play something more. Do you mind playing something? What do you want to play? Yes. Uh, I don't know. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Let's play. Okay. Just, I'll, I'll, I'll give you a second to get ready. Um, yes. And um, I would like to, to remind you, like, so um, to, to subscribe. Uh, since I, I, I've been doing this every Saturday and I plan to continue doing this since we have like, you know, some amazing bass players that I would like to introduce to, to the world and um, to show how slap can be used in pretty much any music genre. We had bluegrass and uh, cajunto, rockabilly, swing, blues, um, and we're going to have more, more styles and more players. So make sure to subscribe subscribe button is somewhere around here and um, um, and uh, make sure to like the video slap back in the comments and um, there's a if you want to really want to support us like make sure to check out these donation links you have a uh, paypal and venmo under the video and there's a patreon as well uh, patreon really helps us out um, to keep it going so please check out those. Uh, it seems that Nikolai is ready. So I'm going to introduce him again. And he's going to play. Cool. All right. Hello. Hello. Go ahead. Uh, sorry, I put off my. No, no, head. just go ahead. Just, just start. Standing on a corner where the low down blues Drink me whole in the bottom of my shoe Don't let me be your soul at all Let me be your soul at all Or I won't be your man at all Don't let me be your soul at all So you've been you've been singing <laughs> like uh, quite a bit. It was uh, just for fun, just for you. Just for fun. Okay. So you don't sing with your bands? Yes, I, I'm. I'm starting the. Uh, I'm starting to to sing uh, to sing more and more. Oh, cool. Oh, well, you sound good. Thank um, you very much. I did this up solo, of course, and. Um, I have like a few, few, few more questions, uh, but before we I do that, uh, I would like to to ask our viewers, where are you guys from? Please lie down in a live chat so we know where you're able to watch us, and please let me know if if this is a good time or if you prefer like to change it. I kind of figured out that this this works for. This should work for everyone. It's 11 in California, but you can. It's 8 o'clock, 8 p.m. Um, Central Europe, so you can still watch it even if you're uh, in Asia. It's a little bit harder for people in Japan and and, and Australia, but um, but I think that for most of the planet, it it it, it works fine. Um, and if you have any questions for Nicola, please write them down under the video. 
or for me and then we will answer as soon as possible live um, and this as i mentioned this video has been pre-recorded we recorded it yesterday uh, because nicola is one of rare bass players that pl have a gig right now so he, he was not able to be here with us live but we we did this uh day earlier um so nicola like i would like you also to 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 ask to ask you about um the most essential slap bass songs for you like which which songs would you choose uh that um that that you would also recommend to other bass players to check out mm. one i i like very much is um it's um uh, bill johnson on, on bass the song is a uh, take the l down on the road down the road i'm gonna uh, do, do you know this song uh, georgie I know. I mean, it's it's on the how low can you go, right? Yes, it's on how low can you go. Yep. I like this because it's uh, early jazz, and um, that's where I figured out uh, his technique. For me, his technique on this song is very similar with uh, some stuff of Woody Dixon. And then. Uh, do you mind like a showing a showing me like what you what what you've been talking about? I'm talking about this technique. All uh, all stuff with Bill Johnson on bass. Uh, you can hear this. Maybe I'm gonna change the angle. Oh, I put out the headphone. technique is similar with some stuff of Woody Dixon. So what would you say that it's so specific about Bill Johnson's technique? Um, a choice of notes or slap that he was using? Because she was mostly playing single slaps, right? Yes, it's single slap, but it, um, the particular thing is um, the syncopation. I don't, for me, uh, it, it, it's something important to um, for for this style. I don't know why. <laughs> and Pop Foster's too. Would you say that Pop Foster's was similar style to Bill Johnson's? Not exactly. Okay. Pop Foster's he played um, uh, not in a ah syncopation too, but uh, I don't know. Ah. Uh, no, I don't have an example to, to show you. Uh, what was the song? Um, I, I don't know. There is, no, it's just about a one syncopation that I don't remember. Yeah. If I, I mean, don't. Whoever is interested in Bill Johnson or Pops Foster and maybe all those old New Orleans cats should definitely check out uh, How Low Can You Go uh, yes. compilation, bass compilation. It, they, are it's, very, it's, they are very similar. It's a great, great introduction to this style. Yes. Um, I also, something that's specific about you is that like was when I saw you uh, playing Big Noise from Winnetka. You what? you had you had your own kind of approach to that song. Uh, that was not exactly like uh, Bob Hoggart. It was a little bit unique. No. You spiced it up. You know, 
uh, I heard and I've seen uh, Bob Hargat, and first thing uh, I said to myself, first I, I learned uh, the song, the, all the bass lines, and uh, first, second thing I, tell, I told to myself is, why not put this in a Stray Cat Strut solo? And uh, a, a, during a long time, I, I put uh, Big Nose from Winnetka in Stray Cat Strut solo. It was funny to d double time uh, the tempo and play it. You can f find this uh, at YouTube. Also. I, I remember that you, you, you sent me some of those. Um, you played Stray Cat Strut with Charlotte, right? And then yep. you added a, a, a Big Noise from Inetka, right? Yes. Uh, but then there's that video that you posted on YouTube as well, a big noise from Inetka that you were you yeah. playing by yourself. That was done for a TV or something? Yes, it was for a, for a TV uh, TV show that uh, never uh, exists. <laughs> oh, really? Okay. But you got like a nice nice little music video. But I got a, a nice sound and a picture. Yes. I mean, yeah, it really looks great. If you guys haven't seen it, make sure to check it out. Just Google Nicolas. Du Boucher, uh, big noise from Win Netcam. Um, I, you know, for some reason, I always loved Bob Hoggard. He's kind of like one of the coolest slap bass players, and he even uh, um, released a slap bass book, like instructional book. Um, I never heard about it since uh, one day uh, Kevin Smith, Smith uh, sent it to me, and it's. Um, it's a cool, cool little piece of history. Uh, and he doesn't talk too much about slap, but he does talk about slap in the book. So it's a, it's a cool, 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 cool little thing. Um, it's been 15 years almost, like since you released the slip, Slipology, uh, your instructional DVD. Mm, no, 10, 10 years, no? 10? You, you released it in 2010? No, nine. Nine. Oh, okay. I, I think it's it's two thousand nine. Nine. So, so right before, basically, right before your interview with Art of Slab Base. Right before. Okay. Oh, okay. So they they came out around, around the same time. Um, it's it's really one of the best slab base instructional videos. I highly recommend it, um, and I've been recommending it ever since I I seen it. Um, if you guys don't have a copy, grab your copy at artofslabbase.com and you're going to uh, get it uh, as soon as possible. It's an excellent, definitely one of my favorite instructional DVDs. There, there are not that many um, it, it, slab base instructional DVDs, but this one is highly recommended. Um, it's, it's, um, it's, a, it's a good one. Uh, we've been talking about it like a 10 years ago or so, and then you said that you were planning to do a volume two. Do you still plan to do that? Yes, maybe one day. <laughs> you know, I, I have, uh, the, the first one, Slapology, uh, was super simple. I did it because uh, that the, the tuto tutorial DVD I was dreaming about when I was uh, 14 years old. The, nothing exists existed at the, the moment. So I said I want one method DVD with chapters, no new section, simple slab, double, triplet, uh, Willie Dixon, Roomba, etc. So it was at the end of the day very simple to realize. But to make a number two of slapology is different. I have different uh, scenarios different way of, in my head to, to make it. Maybe um, uh, talk about um, uh, soloing, uh, how to uh, to play uh, in a band, how to play dif different styles. And with the new technology, it, it would be very nice. I want it maybe like, uh, like um, a road movie. In an old car with my bass, meet uh, gypsy players, blues players, jazz players, make some something funny and uh, 
entertaining and tutorial too. It's instructional. I have, I have different plans. You should definitely, you should definitely do that. I'm sure that lots of people would be interested. Um, so let me see, like, did I cover everything? I think that we're close to the end. Uh, so all this, like, it's almost two hours. You know, like when I started this slap stream, I thought that this would be like a 45 minute episode. Like who wants to talk about slap for more than 45 minutes or 15 minutes? And it's been like, you know, hour and a half, two hours, three hours. So crazy. Buddy and I just love talking about slap and there's like so much um, that haven't been said before. So, so I think that people and fans like deserve to find uh, accurate, the most accurate information from the best players out there. And now it's the time to do it. So that's why I created Slapstream live from Slapsville. Um, so one thing that I also uh, uh, also wanted to ask you is um, what does inspire you to do to still do what you're doing? You know, it's it been uh, you said that you started in early '80s, so it's been almost 40 years that you've been playing bass, upright bass, and then you still do it with lots of energy, lots of passion, and uh, lots of enthusiasm and then what's what's that thing that it still gives you that drive i i don't know i don't know i'm um uh, i like to play music i, I like to play a uh, discover different style maybe to to create uh, create a uh, different slap combination you know, after uh, 30, uh, 35 years of playing, it happens again that sometimes I'm uh, in my bed and I'm thinking about a, a, a slap uh, combination and I get out my bed, take my bass and, and make it again. Uh, maybe that's because I, I am, I'm always, I'm always a, a child, <laughs> I stay young, <laughs> maybe Bordeaux wine. Yeah, Bordeaux wine definitely helps. You know, that's funny. One thing I, I, I say, I say time to time to students is don't forget we say playing music. In playing, you have play to play. To play is like a kid. You play when you discover something, when you want to, to create a story in your mind. And, um, it's to play, and maybe music make make us uh, younger. I think so. I mean, it's um, it's uh, it's it's you know who, who who doesn't play music, or who you know. Unfortunately, there are people out there that don't understand music. It's um, it's 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 a sad life without music. It, music is magic and love and everything that we need and you know th just thanks to music you know i met like so many so many great people uh like you um what are the uh i just have like a couple more questions uh for you are there any uh nowadays slap bass players that you that that you respect that you like and uh, uh that you would recommend for other people like to uh to check yes. out yeah there is a, a lot man i think you you, <laughs> you know him and they, they went to the slap stream for sure there are there is a ryan for sure ryan gould who is a, a friend too uh all the guys from the the, the first uh, episode like uh like kevin smith uh Sample. I, I don't know if you got it. Well, I know you, you know all these guys, and they are a bit famous too. Uh, one guy I, I discovered two or three years ago is uh, Rodrigo Mantovani, and uh, he drops uh, some videos at Facebook of uh, those months that have, are very interesting, and he's uh, from the. It's about uh, all the uh, old style, all blues, uh, all blues style uh, playing. 
And uh, I don't know. I don't know many names names I can mention mention without uh, missing some some. Yeah, there are some great guys out there playing and slapping, and you're absolutely correct. Rodrigo is is an excellent uh, blues, all blues style um, uh, bass player. He does like some cool uh, ransom gnawing videos and a few other. If you guys are not familiar with him, check it out. I think that he does that on Facebook, so look it up. Um, and um, I think that's, that's that's pretty much everything I wanted to 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 ask you. And like it's a little bit weird without live chat interaction with 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 people. Is there anything else you wanted to mention? Oh no, no. You know, it's very difficult to stay focused uh, two hours long <laughs> speaking English. I never speak English. I uh, I write a lot in English to answer questions. <laughs> to to speak in English, it, it's very difficult uh, to uh, to mention everything you you got in your brain. But I think uh, I think we we say the the most important important things. I think we covered you know everything or most of it that you know wanted we wanted to to do this. But you know we can do this like once or twice per week, you know, so that you can practice your English more. Yes, it, it, should, it, should, be, it should be better for me and for uh, for the audience too. <laughs> and we just slap and slap and slap and play. And um, Cool, man. Thanks a lot, like, for this, like, for almost two hours long uh, slap stream. Um, and um, But you owe me a lesson as well. So we're going to do the lesson when I come back to Slapsville. Yes. So, so we're gonna figure out something cool for that to teach our our viewers. And mm -hmm. um, man, I wish you luck. Like, have fun on your gig. You're you're about to 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 to, to leave. And as I said, like one of rare bass players, rare musicians on the planet now that has like so many gigs. So I'm I'm ha really happy for you. Uh, Thanks, thanks again for uh, being a part of Slapstream. You are a very important part of um, Slap Bass world, and I, you know, love your playing, and I can't wait to see you play live. Thank you very much, buddy, my good old bro. See you, and uh, I wish you the best, and uh, and the end of the lockdown for for everyone, especially in America the, these days. It seems to be very difficult. It's it's crazy. It's crazy, but hopefully it's you know people gonna uh, get smart soon. <laughs> <laughs> All right, man. Like so, see you in Bordeaux or if you come to Los Angeles. Okay. All righty. See you. Thank you, buddy. Au revoir. <laughs> cool, man. All right. So that's that. Um, that was Nicolas Duboucher, uh, one of my favorite slap bass players. For, for a long time, one of my great friends. Um, I love that guy is playing. Like, if you're not familiar with him, check out his bands, uh, Rockabilly, Charla, and check out uh, Sweet Dixie, that they changed the name, and um, a few other artists that, uh, that uh, we've been talking about. Um, and make sure to check out his um, YouTube channel. It has, like, very uh, informative... Uh, slap bass um, tricks and advices, and um, so I think I, I think it's very worth uh, checking it out. Uh, we've been with him for almost two hours. I will also post a link for his Facebook under the video, so you can friend him or follow him and see what he's up to. Um, during the during the lockdown and after when we finally start playing and everything i want to thank you again for uh everyone for following this uh slap stream has been very successful like way more than i thought it ever would like live stream dedicated to slap base you um we got like some new patreons uh so please check out patreon if you really want to support us 
uh, Patreon has been is very helpful. And I got like a few donation links, PayPal and Venmo under the video. So check that out. And um, subscribe button should be around here. And um, and uh, let us know in the comments who we would like to see next. And uh, if you have any specific questions, you can always write down. And then we're gonna we're gonna answer that as soon as possible. Um, you can follow Nikolai. You can follow me. All the links are below. Instagram and Facebook. And the most important, Art of Slab Base. Check out artofslabbase.com. Follow us on Facebook and Instagram and Twitter. As I said, all the links are below. Um, and um, what else? Oh yeah, like like I wanna I say like a huge uh, thanks to Fernando Slap from Argentina, from Buenos Aires, a great friend of mine um, and a bass player from the band Motorama. He's been doing uh, all the designs for Art of Slab Bass. He did that cool uh, uh, promo video that we have on YouTube and Facebook. And um, he's been doing all these cool graphics. Let me see my name, Nicola name, uh, and um, everything else. He did that. So thanks, Fernando. Thanks a lot. Links for his socials are also below. And um, don't forget, never fret. Slide it in smooth and keep it in a groove. This is Jorge, your friendly neighborhood bull fiddle cat. And I'll see you next Saturday.